Hey everybody, my name is Ben, and today I have the 2016 MacBook Pro. I wanted to look at it with you and tell you how it's been to use for the last week. So, here we have it. This is the 2016 MacBook Pro, and it is in beautiful condition. I made a previous video on my channel about the 2016 MacBook Pro, warning everybody to avoid it and never to buy one, essentially, mainly based on concerns with the keyboard. However, I broke my own advice and I went ahead and bought one when I found it for only about $200 and with only 31 battery cycles on it. So this one had gotten a new keyboard and a new bottom case on it just a couple of years ago and it's just been kind of stored since then. So it's in beautiful condition and I have to say this is probably the only way I would buy one of these computers now in 2023. Now, I've used it for the last week for all my classes and for my day-to-day -day work so let's get into what I've liked about it and what's been a struggle with it. So right off the bat, I have to say, I love the touch bar. The touch bar is a real joy. I don't understand quite so much why it gets so much hate and why people didn't like it because it is so nice to just slide my finger and adjust the brightness. The same with the volume or in messages to be able to just put in an emoji so easily. It's really a treat. Um, so that is something that I've enjoyed about it. One thing that I have noticed that is annoying with this machine is the keyboard. Now let me just bang the keyboard a little bit so you can hear what it's like. So it makes a lot of noise and I'm not hitting the keys particularly hard. It just always makes a lot of noise. Now that's something that people have complained about with this machine a lot. Um, People around you will notice and will hear the keyboard, <laughs> and it's definitely noticeable compared to a more modern MacBook Pro. I'll just grab my M1 right here and we'll just hit the keyboard. It's a lot quieter. So that is something that is a little bit annoying about this computer. Another thing that you have to keep your eye on is the battery. Now, it's still usable, but considering that this one that I got only has 34 battery cycles on it, and this laptop was originally rated for 10 hours of battery life, I think I'm only getting about two or three on a charge and I'm not even using it that hard. All I do on it is basic programming, web browsing, answering messages and taking notes in class. And it's really struggling with even that. So right off the bat, um, let's open up some apps and just see the performance of it. And I've actually been pleasantly surprised with the performance. And you can see a video I just barely uploaded that compares the performance of this to the M1 MacBook Pro, and it really is, is pretty competent. So let's open up Visual Studio Code, see how quickly it opens up. It's pretty quick. Let's open up um, RStudio for the heck of it. That also is relatively quick. Uh, let's do Apple Music, and that pulls right up. So really, the performance is surprisingly solid on this machine still. Um, I also have a Surface Book with an 8th gen Intel processor, while this has a 6th gen i5. And I honestly think that this MacBook is quicker than the Surface Book, just because of the way that macOS runs and is optimized. Now, another little joy of this machine uh, has to be Touch ID up here. It's just as fast and just as capable as newer machines. You can see it unlocks just with a quick second and a tap. Um, so you're getting a lot for your money, especially if you can get one of these for as cheap as I did. Um, so overall, I think, I can't think of much else to say about this machine, but it's really incredible. It's really a fascinating machine to use in 2023. And the only thing that I think you should keep your eye out for is the fact that it doesn't receive software updates anymore. It's permanently stuck on macOS Monterey. Now, you can easily bypass that with some tweaks um, from, I think on Mac Rumors and some of the forums, there's open core and other ways to put newer versions of macOS on this machine. But just by the very fact that it has an Intel chip in it, I know that it's not gonna receive the support that it deserves long-term from Apple. So that is something to be aware of. And again, like I mentioned previously on my channel, these keyboards are super problematic. 
I owned a 2017 MacBook Pro a couple of years ago. And even just after about 150, 100 to 150 cycles, I was having issues with the keyboard with repeating presses or missing presses. So that is something to keep your eye on. If you're even bothering with the used market, I probably wouldn't buy one unless I had heard from a seller that had absolutely no issues and it probably had less than 150 battery cycles on it. Otherwise, you're just playing with too much of a risk with these keyboards. But overall, it's a complete joy of a machine and it shares so much with the newer MacBook Pros that are so much more expensive like this M1 here um, that you're really getting a ton of value in 2023. So overall, it's it's a mixed bag whether or not you should get it. Um, but I say if you can find it for a good deal and if you know it has a good battery cycle count, I say go for it. But overall, I think it would be worth the money if you're going long term to invest in an Apple Silicon MacBook, especially something that has, you know, M2 processor, you're going to be set for years. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please let me know below if you have any questions about the machine. Um, I can definitely make some more content on it. So have a good one. Bye.